This is going to be the full team report of the team I used to win a Regulation D tournament earlier back. I don't plan to use this team later in the future, so I want to share with you guys and kind of go over the process of how it was made. It was actually a Regulation C team designed to function Regulation D. Now, this team I actually first, like the first version of this team did come in Regulation C. I wanted to use Gyarados after the European International Championships because I thought Gyarados plus Nasty Plot Chi Yu would have a really good matchup into Palafin Balance. So I decided to create a team with Gyarados, Chi Yu, Fluttermane, Amoongus, and then I thought Iron Hands would be really good at giving Fake Out, but also just overall super bulky. Overall, having something that's really bulky and can also remove Fluttermane with Heavy Slam, which really opens up Chi Yu to be able to get up Nasty Plot. Then I ended up putting Roaring Moon in the last slot, and I just thought it was really good in terms of the offensive pressure it put on, and it was also something that I was comfortable with. It also destroyed Mouse Safe, which was something that was pretty common back then, so I put the 6 into the builder, I got it to around 1800 pretty comfortably, and this was relatively early on in Regulation uh, C as well, so I was like pretty confident with the team. I posted it to Patreon, I like kind of um, went over some battles, that's usually do what I do, if, um, if I have a team that's really successful in the moment, I like to kind of just like you know, like showcase some of the replays, post it to like to, to my Patreon for them to see, and it was pretty much like it was pretty much that. But the issue with that version of the team was that the Iron Hands was Terra Grass. Now, if Iron Hands is Terra Grass, then opposing Chi Yu Fluttermane is really annoying for this team. It can pretty much run through this team, and you have to rely on the fact that your Fluttermane could potentially be faster, which playing into speed ties isn't the most optimal. So I kind of ended up dropping the team and started to go for Palafin Balance, and that's how I, that's kind of how I ended up with like the uh, like the Ting Lu stuff. But then in regulate then Regulation D came around and. This uh, Jude Lee, one of my friends, ended up taking the same six with different sets and was able to get around 2100 on Showdown. So after he was able to get 2100 on Showdown with the same six, I decided to revisit the team that I built back in uh, Regulation C, which was the same six, and kind of recreate some of the EV spreads and also some of the Terra types and kind of design it for Regulation D. So the first change I made is I changed the Iron Hands from Terra Grass to Terra Water. Uh, I changed it to Terra Water so it's able to take on the Chi Yu Fluttermane so my entire team doesn't lose to it. It also beats her Shifu Rapid Strike, which is something that was added into Regulation D. Then Roaring Moon, I ended up changing the spread. Um, the original spread was something different, but um, this one I designed it so if you Terra Flying, then you can live with Surging Strikes from Mystic Water or Shifu. I thought that was pretty important since um, like basically with this amount of speed and attack, you're not really able to outrun other Jolly or Shifu, and even some Adamant ones, so I didn't just want to lose to a Surging Strikes if they just read me and did not go for close combat. So I thought having that bulk was really important. Now if you guys saw me play on stream versus Riley, every time he led Gyarados, I still got the attack boost. And the reason is, is that even though you get intimidated, you go down to 140, and then the speed all stays at 140 as well. And because attack is like is before speed, you actually get the attack boost instead of getting the speed boost, which is really useful at allowing yourself to set up Dragon Dance even if you get up and intimidate. You also just do 60-70% to a lot of the common intimidators just with minus one acrobatics because of the booster energy attack. So you're really able to do a lot of damage, and a lot of teams just did not have an answer to Roaring Moon. Then I ended up going for Amoongus. The original Amoongus on that team, like in Regulation C, had Citrus Berry. I saw Jude using Rocky Helmet Clear Smog. A uh, Clear Smog Amoongus has picked up a little bit. I think some people are going for Leaf Storm to beat her Shifu Rapid Strike as well. A uh, Rocky Helmet super common as too. But the thing about Clear Smog is that it beats Don Dozo, but it also beats a lot of other random setup Pokemon. And I don't really want to lose to Sword Stance Hands, even though that Pokemon is kind of common. Like it's, I mean, Sword Stance Hands doesn't exist that much, but I feel like it's really good into the Regulation D meta. So I didn't want to end up losing to it because I, I think my team doesn't actually have the best matchup into it So putting clear smog was a good decision then Gyarados a uh, big change I changed from Terra Steel to Terra Ghost uh, the reason to change to Terra Ghost is that you're able to take on Ursa Luna a lot easier and you can just taunt the Cresselia and because you're so naturally bulky you're able to kind of take on that stuff I made my Gyarados really fast though, and Regulation C my Gyarados is super slow and bulky, like I think I only made it so it outsped like Bundle after the uh, Thunder Wave if they've used their booster energy, but now I made it really fast, I wanted to outrun a lot of the bulky landers, I wanted to outrun a lot of potential Rillaboom so I can just immediately Thunder Wave them into like Iron Hands going for its move if I did commit the Terra Water, because I don't want them to get off Woodhammer. 
I also wanted to just get fast heat waves off into Heatran, and I wanted to waterfall the Heatran down too. I think it was really important to be pretty fast, and that's kind of the reason why I actually ended up going with a lot of speed. And then I just put into defense because I wanted to help versus the Cresselia Ursaluna matchup. Uh, the Fluttermane here is Choice Specs. Uh, I, I actually went for Choice Specs Fluttermane and not Specs Chi Yu. I went with the, this was a really interesting Chi Yu set, um, Nasty plus Snarl, so the original Chi Yu set on that team was super bulky goggles with Dark Pulse, which was the really common one back then, but I feel like if you're playing Chi Yu in Regulation D, especially with Nasty Plot, I think you have to be max speed timid because you want to outrun, outrun her Shifu Rapid Strike. And I wanted to have Nasty Plot just to like really get that damage going because I had ways to set it up just through Iron Hands going for Fake Out. And then Snarl was really useful into the Armourouge and DD matchup. It was also really useful into a lot of Heatrans. Like, I played a lot of Heatrans in that tournament, and I was just able to Snarl them down. And because I was getting down the Snarls, because I was able to cycle around Intimidate and Snarl, Roaring Moon was actually easier, like, position to set up. And I also felt like if there was any strong special attack going into Fluttermane, like potential, again, Flash Cannon from Heatran, I was able to pressure Snarl and Shadow Ball and kind of just attack around the Heatran. And Snarl was also doing a lot of damage too, like if you got up one Nasty Plot, then Snarl was really really chunking things because of Beads of, Beads of Ruin. This kind of Chi Yu set's really unheard of though, like Nasty Plot plus Snarl, but it was something that I was really proud of actually inventing, because um, I actually, I like, I don't think I've ever seen it before, but it seemed to put in a lot of work in the tournament. It was mainly only there for the Ndidi Armourouge, but it actually ended up being useful into like, I think a Zapdos as well in top 16. Then there was um, Gyarados, uh, I talked about Gyarados spread, okay Fluttermane. So, um, pretty much, I wanted to be the fastest Fluttermane because I had Chi Yu on the board, and I thought being faster allowed Fluttermane to sweep into other Fluttermane easier. Fluttermane's really forced to run bulk in this format, so I was like, okay, my Fluttermane's not gonna live anything. Like, it doesn't even live Adamant Icicle Crash, which if you guys, um, see this tweet over here, I gave this team to Justin to use in one of the, um, like, uh, one of the small, one of the online tours, and he, in round two or one, I think he won round one. Round two, he pulled a, he pulled a Chen Pal that just went immediately for Icicle Crash, and, lo and he lost his Fluttermane. He's like, bro, Neil, why'd your <laughs> Fluttermane get knocked out? I was like, oh no, I, I didn't make my Fluttermane designed to live, and he was just like, yo, fraudulent. I was like, like, oopsie. <laughs> yeah, no. But um, Fluttermane, like, I pretty much wanted it to sweep next to Chi Yu. I didn't actually want the bulk. I was like, okay, I can just get knocked out by everything, but I want to be able to do as much damage as possible. So I made it live Ice Spinner because I was like, that's probably pretty important. But um, because half the Chen Pao's do run Ice Spinner and Jolly. But um, yeah, max speed was really good. I outran every Fluttermane I played against, and I was just able to go for Terra Fairy Gleam next to Chi Yu and pretty much two shot everything. And I want to get as much special attack as possible while still having like the bulk to take. Um, I think this lives. Um, like I think like Adamant Sucker Punch off of uh Chen Pao. Like I think that was actually the benchmark because I don't want to get knocked out to that. I never clicked Icy Wind. I think uh, Energy Ball is probably a bit better right now, or Thunderbolt. Uh, since some people are using Gyarados, I think opting for Thunderbolt is probably more optimal here. Um, Amoongus spread. So what the Amoongus spread did is that um, with 244 and 180, what you can do is um, you lift Chen Pao Ice Spinner. I can actually kind of go over this. Okay, let's open up the calc and uh, let's actually start putting these spreads in and like actually showing the exact calcs because I think that's more. I think that's more informative in terms of like this video. But yeah, Amoongus was here, um, custom set, okay, so at that time, like, yeah, Chen Pao go Ice Spinner, let's just change this from Choice Band to that, and yeah, so Ice Spinner off of Adam and Chen Pao, you pretty much always lived. I thought that was really, really important, because you want to be able to actually live that, because, like, that's, that's one of the most common moves coming off of Chen Pao. Then the other thing was that I put 28 into speed. I always wanted to outrun other Amoongus because my Amoongus did not have protect and I didn't just want them to knock us, knock me out due to like a low health pollen puff. So like because of that, I think being faster Amoongus is really nice. It allows you to be able to heal up your setup Pokemon a bit easier in front of other Amoongus, which actually does come up a bit. So the 28 speed is actually really useful into the Amoongus mirror. And then I ended up putting the rest into special defense because I already felt like I had enough physical defense. So like putting rest into special defense kind of makes a difference. Difference. Uh, Gyarados I already really talked about. The only thing to note is that this is an even number, so if they go for like Ruination or like a uh, Super Fang, you're able to get your Citrus Berry back immediately, which I think is really important. Then Iron Hands. Okay. So what this Iron Hands spread did is that, like with 44 speed, I felt like I can outrun a decent amount of Iron Hands, but I also want it to be really bulky so I can actually take on, uh, I can take on Chen Pao Dragonite and I can also take on Chi Yu Fluttermane. I found that to be really important, and I also just think Hands is a really good Pokemon into this format. 
So if we look at Iron Hands into um, opposing Dragonite, this is something that was actually really important, and this is like what I calced for. So let's see. Yes, yeah, so let's go to Choice Span, uh, not Dra Dragon Dance. Um, yeah, we can just like put plus one here and then put Outrage. Yeah, so if they go for Outrage, right now it's doing 65 to 77.2. But if we put in Sword of Ruin here, then, then we have a pretty good roll to live the Outrage. I also wanted to maximize the special defense so we get overall maximum special bulk. And then I wanted to hit at least the first attack bump where you get two points because I wanted this thing to still be able to like have good board presence. So that was kind of like the Iron Hands. It was only a little bit of speed, and so the the other reason for 44 is that some Ursa Luna are trying to speed creep each other for the Ursa Luna mirror. Maybe they run 20 speed, they run 12 speed, they run 28. I've seen some run 36, but I hadn't seen any, any run 44, so I felt like 44 is really safe into opposing Ursa Luna. I talked about Roaring Moon. Um, not too much to say about it, though. Like, if you're playing Roaring Moon, you have to go max attack adamant. I think it's so important because, like, you do want to do a lot of damage with acrobatics. Like, I think the big strength of Roaring Moon is that you get up one Dragon Dance and then you just immediately knock everything out. Like, Terraflying Acrobatics has pretty much no switch in. The other move I really liked on Roaring Moon was Jaw Lock. I've seen a lot of people go, like, um, Throw Chopper Crunch. Jaw Lock's really nice because you're able to, um, what is it called? Like, you trap things in, and that allows, like, potentially Amoongus to get off a free Spore, Gyarados to get off a free T-Wave, Fluttermane or Chiyu to pick up a KO, and I think it, it, it gives you a lot better of a positioning game sometimes, and it kind of allows you to use Roaring Moon as a setup Pokemon, but also something that can benefit off of, off of positioning. Because if you can, like, weaken something through Snarls and Intimidates and then Jaw Lock it, then you can just swap into your Amoongus, start setting up a bunch of Dragon Dances, and you can really easily end the game. I think that's one of the biggest strengths of Roaring Moon on the team. And uh, let's talk about the Chiyu spread. So, um, like, Chiyu, and, like, the reason I wanted to talk about it is because, like, going 288 and then going 12, like, there definitely should be a reason for it, because, like, realistically, going max and just, like, fours would be more optimal, like, in terms of, like, an objective perspective. But, um, yeah, let's do Chiyu here. So I hate going up against Lilligan Torkoal. It is really, really annoying, and there's a lot of variance. So I wanted a Chiyu that just beat Lilligan Torkoal. I thought that was really important. So let's go here and close combat. I want to see if I'm getting this right. Oh, it says Hustle. Yeah, I was so confused. Okay. So minus one close combat. So assuming you lead Chiyu plus Gyarados into, um, like, you know, um, Lilligan Torkoal, you live the minus one close combat. Which is really, really important, because then you can just start spamming Snarls and Thunder Wave, and as soon as you Thunder Wave the Lilligan, then your Fluttermane in the back is able to sweep. The other really useful thing about having a Fluttermane be, like, super fast is that if if they have Sun Up and they have Fluttermane in the late game, you can Chi you Fluttermane your own late game, because you're going to get the speed boost, and they're probably going to get the special attack boost, because most of the Fluttermanes on Sun play towards the special attack boost. So I really wanted to actually match up fish that. It's not really a super common team. It's just something that I personally don't like going up against. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to completely try to beat that. But yeah, that's kind of like a decently informative team report like on the team. I'm going to do one battle just to like kind of showcase how the team functions. I think mostly you kind of just have to like... What I, I'd say like what I like about the team is that you don't have to bring a Moongus into other Moongus because you have access to Gyarados and because you have access to Chiyu. Like, that's something that I found to be pretty solid. Now, this kind of matchup is super volatile, by the way, because, like, what you have to do is, like, I go these four, and my game plan is that you can lead Iron Hands Fluttermane. Fluttermane's pretty nice, or you can lead Iron Hands Gyarados. I think Gyarados on lead is probably a bit better into this. And then you go Amoongus Roaring Moon, or you go, like, Amoongus Fluttermane. If they have Chen Pao Knight instead of, like, um, Tornadus uh, Pamat, then you, then you have to go Fluttermane because you don't want to lose to E-Speed Spam. Like, when I played the uh, tournament finals, they actually had Chen Pao D Knight as, like, the last two here, so into that I actually had to bring the Fluttermane, and I couldn't bring the Roaring Moon. I did actually bring Roaring Moon to game one, and I just, like, ended up, like, winning on the spot, but I thought that game plan wasn't the most optimal, and actually bringing Gyarados into game three, I think, is the reason I ended up winning. Dude, because game two, I think they brought, like, Chiyu Flutter on um, Chen Pao D Knight, and they ended up just, like, doing too much damage to me. But yeah, this is um, what we're gonna do. Stop using cheese. Uh-oh. Dude, it's Pama. I think Pama's actually a pretty good Pokemon. Like, on Tailwind, I think being able to recover up, like, a potential Goldango could have a lot of value. And also, like, on Tailwind, you outspeed, like, Urshifu, so I think you, you can definitely get some, like, you can definitely get some interesting things out of it. Like, Revival Blessing, I think, is still a really underexplored move. Like, it's been super good with Dondo. It's been super good with Dondozo, though, which I, like, I, which is definitely the reason why it's here. Okay. 
So we can go for a Terra Water Heavy Slam, I think. And I think we can just go into Amoongus. Yeah, and the reason I want to go into Amoongus here is that... Like, going into Amoongus should give us enough redirection so we don't lose to the Palmont once we commit our Terra. The only thing we have to make sure is that we don't actually lose to the Chi Yu. But I think between our like two, two Water types, once we Terra, we should be okay. Oh, I don't like Fake Out. <laughs> I don't like Fake Out. Oh, I can just Heavy Slam here and go for Redirect. I think Redirecting is really important so they don't know that Palmont doesn't go kind of crazy. Yeah, because otherwise I think Palma can just Terra Electric and pick up a Knockout, which I think won't be the best for us. The other thing I can do is actually go for, like, Spore. Yeah, I, I really wanted to go for Spore there. That's so smart. Dude, I really wanted to go for Spore there. Dude, that would have been perfect. Yeah, because I was like, if I go for Spore and I lose Iron Hands, it wouldn't be the worst. Okay. Not the most optimal play here. I think what I'm going to do is... Dude, I want to call the Palmot coming in, but there's no reason to. Like, why make the call when, like, it might not even happen? Okay, a booster, um, whatever that is. That seems to be special attack, yeah. Dude, I needed to spore there. Dude, I had another chance to spore, actually. Not the best, not the best. I think if we position Roaring Moon eventually, we should be okay, but it definitely could get kind of ugly. Yeah, I think they have to go after Iron Hands here, which is why I'm doing this. If they go after Gyarados with the um, Double Shock, then I would be pretty sad. Yeah, I felt like they had to do that. And they're going to Bleak Windstorm. We don't lose our Mon, luckily. And cool. So now the Palmot's faster, which is huge, which is like hugely important to actually like note. So we can just go for Fake Out and um, like knock out the Palmot the next turn. I think so. Yeah, I'm just going to try to break Sash here. Oh, they actually Revival Blessing. Shoot. That's not good. That's actually not good at all. Yeah, I'm going to go for Fake Out. I'm going to go for Dragon Dance. Or I'm going to try to Dragon Dance. Okay, so we get off Fake Out here as they're just going to Bleak Windstorm, I assume. Yeah, so they do actually try to go for Bleak Windstorm here and... Now I can go into Gyarados, and I think I can just try to go for Dragon Dance. I have to go for Dragon Dance here, because I think otherwise I could just lose the game. They do Double Shock, okay. Yeah, so here I can just go for Fake Out, and I think I can just, um, Jaw Lock. No, I think I gotta Jaw Lock this thing. Yeah, the reason I gotta Jaw Lock the Torn is that I don't want it to Tailwind. Okay, so they probably will go for Close Combat. I think that has to be their play. I just want to see if, um... This is probably going to be really close. I'm not sure how much minus one close combat does. I'm going to protect ones just to see if their Fluttermane protects. And then I think I can adjust my play from there. A lot of this really does depend on their last Pokemon as well. Like, if it's Dondozo, I don't think I win. But if it's anything, if it's Chiyu, then I might be okay. Oh, they just Moonblast. Okay. I mean, I can acrobatics here. Oh, wait, why am I an acrobat? I should jaw lock. The reason I should jaw lock is that um, it's able to pick up, what is it called? It's able to uh, pick up Palmot coming in in the back. Let's see, they could protect the Fluttermane. I don't want to read into it, yeah. So how much is Chi Yu going to do? Oh, that's a lot of damage. The only thing is, I don't know if another Overheat knocks out. Because uh, 37 times 2 is about 74, which is not at 63 at all. It's going to be very close. Like, I think we live. Also, I think that's Specs. That seems to be Specs, because Pomod has to be Sash. Yeah, if we live the Overheat, I think we might be good. Okay, so we do live the Overheat, and now if they're not Specs, then, if they're not Sash, then we win. Yeah. But that's Roaring Moon for you. Like, very, very, very strong Pokemon. Like, it just 1v3 to Chiyu, Fluttermane, and Palmot, just because I got up Dragon Dance. Like, one Dragon Dance allowed me to do all that. Like, that's the power of Roaring Moon. Like, I think it's like, it doesn't have the best matchups, it's just, I think it's a broken Pokemon. I kind of wish I figured it out for, like, for, like, another event, but, um, yeah, it's, it's so good. I also think part of it's just, like, comfort, but, like, this, this Pokemon is, like, I think it's, like, insanely good into, like, anything. 
Like, again, like, I'm, I'm gonna say, like, I don't think it has the best matchup spread, but it's just overall such a good Pokemon that I think it's, like, it's really hard not to use. Like, the sixth Pokemon on this team, it was literally, like, I did not even think about matchups. It was just, like, yup, I think Roaring Moon's very good, so I'm just gonna throw it on. But yeah, I'm gonna kind of end it there. That was kind of, um, like, brief team report and also just, like, showcasing the team in a battle. Uh, and yeah, with that out of the way, um, if you guys want coaching from me, feel free to hit me up in a week or two. And, uh, yeah, with that out of the way, again, I uh, hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.